In this video, we're talking about immunity, specifically why you can keep getting sick over and over and over again, and why everything you've been told about immune system boosting is likely wrong. Because I'm sorry to tell you this, but you can't boost your immune system with a fizzy orange drink. By the end of this video, you'll understand why immune system strength isn't the real issue. Instead, we're going to look at three predictable ways your immune system actually breaks down so you can stop reacting to sickness and rather start bulletproofing your system. I'm Dr. Ashley Frazee. I'm a primary care doctor, but I stepped away from the traditional insurance model. And that's allowed me to be more creative and actually look at the why behind people's symptoms. And even though I'm a doctor, I am not your doctor. This is for educational purposes only. And this is my thoughts on immunity, but it's not necessarily medical advice. Okay. Here's the problem. Most advice assumes that your immune system fails because it's weak. The solutions are always boost it, strengthen it, wake it up. But human biology shows us something very different. Your immune system doesn't usually fail because it's weak. It fails because it gets confused, exhausted, or distracted. And so you can set your immune system up for success by keeping it regulated, energized, and focused. Now, in order to do that, I want to walk you through three major ways that the immune system breaks down. So here we go. Way number one, the immune system breaks down by not knowing what to fight and what to ignore. You see, most people think chronic inflammation, autoimmune issues, or things like mast cell reactions happen because their system is weak. And it's actually the opposite. These are signs of an immune system that has lost the ability to tell friend from foe. It can't tell the noise from the danger. It's like having a smoke alarm that goes off every time you make toast. You know, at first you rush in to put a fire out, but it's not actually there. But if you never fix the toaster, you eventually just learn to live with the noise, right? And then when a real fire starts, you miss it. Your immune system is designed to do three things. Respond, neutralize, and then stand down. But when you're exposed to smoldering stress signals like chronic cortisol, poor sleep, inflammatory foods, overeating, undereating, your system is constantly being asked to fix something. And an overactive immune system is actually worse at fighting infections because it's constantly burning resources on the wrong targets. But here's the part that we don't talk about enough. An immune system can't overreact forever and eventually it runs out of energy and bigger problems slip through. So let's talk about the second way the immune system gets dysregulated, which is immune exhaustion or low energy. You see, immune responses are metabolically expensive. T cells and natural killer cells are some of the most energy hungry cells in your body. And I'm talking about ATP energy, the cellular energy produced inside your mitochondria. When that energy drops, you see patterns. Infections linger, recovery takes weeks, dormant viruses reactivate. This is why people get things like shingles when they're stressed out. You can think of your immune system like your phone. If you have too many background apps running, which are like chronic stress and inflammation in your body, well, your battery drains. And when you hit 5%, the phone disables the camera to save power. And similarly, when your mitochondria are drained of energy, your body disables your high level immune defenses. I'm often faced in my clinic by patients asking for blood work to test their immunity because they keep getting sick. And usually the numbers look fine and I'm left to explain this very concept. You see, your hardware is fine, your body is working. It's just that your battery is dead and your screen has gone dim. And I think this is why there's been a huge shift in our focus on things like mitochondrial health and using things like NAD and glutathione to support your systems. It's just come to the point where we're all getting sick of being told a medicine is the answer or we don't have the answer when really it's just our systems are malfunctioning because there's energy mismatch or cortisol is too high all the time and your inflammatory responses are going off. And then you burn out your mitochondria and you end up low on energy. And and even your immune system can have low energy. Now, even an immune system with enough energy can fail if it's constantly looking in the wrong direction. This is the third way the immune system can fail. Distraction. You see, your immune system was never meant to be on 24-7 patrol. If we go back to the broken toaster analogy, we have to look at 
you know, where the smoke is coming from. Often it can be like a leaky barrier. You know, I'll use the gut as a good example. You've likely heard of leaky gut syndrome. And what that means is when the lining of your gut gets inflamed, whether that's from chronic stress, inflammation, or food choices that don't agree with your body, the lining of the gut gets inflamed. And the cells that line that gut, they're usually held together by tight junctions like this, but when they get inflamed, they swell up just like a sprained ankle would. And when they swell up, the junctions between them break apart. And then things like toxins, bacteria, and food fragments can leak through where the cells were supposed to be keeping a door closed. And they leak into cells that directly influence your immune system and your bloodstream. And your immune system sees this and it starts working over time to clean up the mess. It gets so distracted by this background noise that then real threats like a virus can slip right past that gate. And this is why you're hearing a lot about how important it is to repair the gut barrier, you know, so your immune system can stop constantly cleaning the floor and instead get up and guard the door. One critical point that ties all of this together is that chronic stress and anxiety completely override your immune signaling. And this isn't just psychological, it's biological. Now, chronic stress doesn't simply exhaust immunity, and I have a whole video on this. It disrupts cortisol signaling and response, which can lead to excessive inflammation and impaired and inefficient immune responses, which is why people often get sick during high stress periods or with things like unresolved trauma or burnout and when they don't get quality sleep. No immune system performs well under constant threat signals. So hopefully you understand now why it's rarely about having a weak immune system. It's more about having one that's been overwhelmed, exhausted, and distracted. And I know you're gonna ask me, well, so what now? What do we do about it? And so in the next video, I'll show you my top 10 list on how to fix these three problems. And I promise it won't just be me telling you to stop stressing out. I've thrown some really fun stuff in there. I'm Dr. Ashley Frazee. I run a direct care practice in Mesa, Arizona, where I get to spend a lot of quality time with my patients so we can talk about things like this. If you like this video, please hit like for me, subscribe to my channel, and have the best day.